Today we're going to be looking at the second part of the task one in the Unit 6 Mac Controllers exam for BTEC Level 3 Engineering, and that is the electronic task book entries. And these entries form probably the majority of the marks available in Activity 1. The Gantt chart needs to be in there to get all of the marks, obviously, but the entries are what forms the bulk of the information because what we can do is show our knowledge of the project cycle and our ability to overcome any issues that we come across. The task itself, uh, it is says that during the other activities, activities two to five, you should also record in the activity one section of your electronic tax booklet what you did in the session, details of any issues encountered and solutions discovered, and action points for the next session. And at first this seems quite simple, you just kind of keep in the diary and say how things have gone at the end of each of your sessions, whether it be an hour and a half session, a one hour session, a two hour session, or whatever you're going to do. But there's a little bit more to it, and like I say, the majority of the marks come from this area, and it has to be answered in a particular way to make sure you're going to get all these marks. So it's worth knowing exactly what kind of things you need to say and how you need to say them. And knowing just a few things that I'm going to go over in this video will really help to maximise the marks you get in this section, which is up to 10 marks, and that's a huge amount of marks in the uh, exam overall. In your answer booklet, you will be given a table which has the following headings. You've got what I have done this session, issues encountered this session, and solutions with justification, and then the action points for the next session. And like I say, at first you might be tempted to do something like this and just say, I've created a Gantt chart. I didn't have any issues because you might not have had any major issues, especially in the first session. And then action points the next session, just say what you're going to do. I'm going to write the specification and the start of the test plan and just leave it nice and simple like that because on the face of it, that does seem like it fulfills what you've been asked to do. However, unsurprisingly, this won't really get you very many marks and we're really wanting to get the marks from this. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to show understanding of why what we're doing is important and show understanding of the project cycle. I'm going to go through some details of what we should do when we are writing these entries. And first and foremost is we need to provide some good detail about what we're doing, why we're doing these things and why are they important. And that does quite well link with the next point, which says we need to link it Link what we've done. So say if you've just finished the specification, you should probably link that back to the brief and say how what you've done in the specification links back to the brief and then what you're going to do to link that going forward. And this goes for when you say what you've done in the session and also your action points for the next session. And what this does is it shows an understanding of how the project cycle works as a whole and how all of the stages interact with each other. Another thing we need to say is that if we've changed anything, so uh, this is for the issues encountered section, we need to say how we've changed it and why I've changed it and also how we came, uh, came got over it. So this just shows that we're adaptable and it shows that you've got the problem solving knowledge to get around any issues that come up. I'm going to go through an example of what I would write for the first section, which is what I've done this section, this session. And it's probably going to be similar to what most of the first sessions would be. So my example is this, I have completed the Gantt chart, which will help me set out the plan of my design and build, whilst ensuring I keep the time and know if I am falling behind, or have gained time that I can use to improve the project. I have also started analysing the brief to write the specification, which will be used to identify the key requirements of the design. This obviously has a lot more detail than just I've written the Gantt chart, and you can see how I've linked writing the specification back to the brief. So I've said I've, I've written a specification on the brief, but also linking how that's going to help me going forward. You can see there's a lot of detail in this comment. Yes, it's just talking about a couple of simple tasks that we do right at the start of the exam, but the details there and we've written quite a lot about what's going on. Like I say, it also refers to the project as a whole. And this can be adapted in any session. So say that you've started building the or programming the device. You can say that you you know you've used the you've started programming that device based on the the plan, so you're going to meet the requirements of the specification, and then you're going to be testing this against the test plan as you're going along, and uh, making sure that it's always meeting the specification in that way. So this can be done at any stage in the project. Sometimes it's a bit more difficult than others, but it's what you should be doing in every single stage. 
for the second section of the log entry, issues and counter edit this session and solutions with justification. And this can be a little bit tricky, especially at the start where you might not have any big issues. So I've used an example of what I could write if I'm um, looking at something right at the start of the session. I struggled to fully understand how the device worked from the brief alone. To help me grasp this, I sketched a diagram of what the brief described, and I was able to understand a lot better once I could see how all of the parts work together. This knowledge will help me as I progress to the later parts of the project, as I will be able to design for the specific requirements of the project. And you can see I've this could really be applied to pretty much any specification writing compared and looking at the brief because it doesn't mention anything in particular and it shows that I have you know had to sit down and have a think about how it worked, but it also shows how I understand why the specification is important and why it's important to know what the brief is. If it was something a bit later, again, maybe you're, you've started designing the, uh, or building the, the programming side of things, then you could maybe talk about how the program didn't quite work the first time you tested it and you had to go back and you had to change a variable or something like that. It becomes a lot more easier at that stage. Important to point out, running the problems is good because it overcome, overcoming them shows an ability in your project and your project management skills or your programming skills. And you need to provide detail of how you overcame these to show how you've really worked well. Another thing, again, link in as much as you can to the project as a whole. Keep thing to remember is maybe you don't need to say about a problem that you've had every single session, but you do need to talk about some problems that you've overcame because otherwise they can't give you marks for overcoming problems if you never overcome any problems. And don't worry about saying that you've maybe failed the first time at something. It's about the end product that you get. And if you come out with a gleaming project at the end of everything, then you're going to do well overall. The final section is action points for the next session. And this is very similar to the first session uh, section and you'll see some parallels in it. In the next session, I will complete the specification by identifying the key points of the brief and writing them in a way I can use to help me choose the hardware I will use, and also help me set out the design for the program. I will also make a start at the test plan, which will be used to ensure the finished project meets all of the necessary criteria. So here, what I'm focusing on is finishing the specification, which is started in this session, and that's why they're kind of linked together, but that's fine. And also looking at a test plan. You can see, again, I've mentioned the whole project and talked about how everything interacts together, and I've also justified the action points. So I've, I've given some reasons why these are going to be my action points. It's not good enough just going to say, I'm going to finish the specification and write the test plan. In summary, for the activity logs, there's a few things we need to bear in mind. It's really important that we cover all these things because most of the marks in task one come here and there's 10 marks available out of 80, which is quite a big chunk of the marks. Another thing is that they're really easy marks if we know how to answer. And if we don't know how to answer them, we're never going to get those marks. It doesn't take long to write this at the end of each session. And if you get a bit of practice and you kind of know what type of things you're going to need to be talking about. Detail is really important and you should be including as much detail as possible. Also, link all of your comments to the whole project as a whole and how everything works together. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you find this really useful. Uh, if you follow these little steps, you should be able to get 9 to 10 marks really easily in this section. I'll be following up with some videos on other sections. I'll have to write a, a new project brief uh, to base everything around, so that'll be coming really soon. Like the video, subscribe to the channel so you get the notifications when I put up new videos and I really hope to see you again soon.